Lone Ranger. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. All right, how much longer? Just a couple of minutes, boss. Vasco! Yes, Mr. Gage? I have to get back to the office. What's delaying them? Well, we have to make sure that all the explosives are set in just the right places. Otherwise, the tunnel you want may not get opened up. How big will it be? Big enough for a man to walk through with his arms loaded with gold ore. That's what you want, isn't it? Yes, but will it reach all the way through to the next mine, the, the Queen Bee? Oh, it can't miss. The nearest tunnel of the Queen Bee is due east, about four more feet through that wall. All set to go, boss. You understand the procedure you'll follow now. We dig the high-grade ore out of this mine, carry it through the tunnel, and bring it up through the Queen Bee. <laughs> you sure you can trust your men not to talk about this? I handpicked every one of them. You're paying them plenty. They'll take orders. Good. Any more questions before I go? Just one. Yes? What do you stand to gain out of all this, Mr. Gage? What do you mean? Well, that mine there, the Mary Bell. That's owned by somebody named Farnham, isn't it? By Mrs. Henry Farnham of San Francisco, one of my richest clients. And this mine here, the Queen Bee, that's owned by some corporation or other, right? So, where's your profit? That corporation, my naive friend, is a dummy. Set up by a very smart lawyer named Gage. <laughs> so that's it. You own the Queen Bee. And I expect to own that mine soon, too then that tunnel won't be necessary. Do you think old Lady Fauna will be willing to sell? When I write her that the mine's running dry, she won't have much choice. Oh, one more thing. I want you to line the walls of that new tunnel with some more blasting powder. Well, what for? We just blew it open. You want us to blow it shut again? I may. If the law ever learns about that tunnel, Lasco, we could get in a lot of trouble, unless we can destroy it as fast as we created it. You think of everything, don't you? I try to. And now I better get to work on that letter to Mrs. Farnham. The sooner she gives me the word to sell, the sooner I can take over the mine for myself. Now, Tom, you certainly got back from Silver City quickly. Are things quieted down there? No, Kimisabi. Old town's still celebrating that we capture Fargo gang. Will our testimony be needed at the trial? No, them plead guilty already. Oh, me almost forgot. Sheriff, give me this letter for you. It came this morning. The person who sent it asked Sheriff to hold it for you. It's from Mrs. Henry Farnham in San Francisco. What her letter say, Kimasami? Dear friend, knowing how you have helped my husband and me in the past, I appeal for your aid now. When Henry died, he left me a valuable gold mine near Ashcroft, Colorado, the Marybelle. He assured me that it would support me for the rest of my life. But now I've just received word from Henry's representative in Ashcroft that the mine is running dry and that I'd be wiser to sell it. That's not unusual, Kimisami. Plenty mines run dry. Well, that's true, Tonto. But Henry Farnham was an expert in his profession. If he said that mine would be good for years to come, you can count on his being right. What her ask you to do, Kimisami? Well, my son Jim is on his way to Ashcroft to inspect the Marabelle. He's a mining engineer like his father, fresh out of college. I'd appreciate any help you can give him. He'll reach Ashcroft Friday. We go there to meet him, Kimisami? Yes, Tonto. I want to be sure that young Jim makes out all right. Just look at that ore. That's the finest great ore I ever saw in my life. And plenty more where it came from. You must be getting rich, boss. Rich enough. All right, carry those sacks up to the surface through the Queen Bee and then come back for more. Right. Gage, 
It must be mighty important to bring you out here during working hours. We're in trouble. What kind? I just got a letter from Old Lady Farm. She won't give the go-ahead signal on selling the mine until after her son comes out here to inspect it. He's on his way now. Well, what's so bad about that? Some tenderfoot who's wet behind the ears? How's he going to know whether the ore is good or not? He happens to be a mining engineer. Oh, we are in trouble. If he ever sees the walls of this mine, we're through. If he sees the walls of this mine. What do you mean? Alaska, I understand that you're a pretty good marksman with a rifle. I've never missed a target yet. Even a moving target? Say a man riding in a stagecoach? I've done it before. I can do it again. The stagecoach is due on Friday. And pick your time and place. If your aim is good, there'll be a bonus for you in your pay envelope. A big one. My aim will be good, Mr. Gay. Let me. Thank you so much. They must be quite important. You haven't stopped writing since you got on at Center City. Oh, that's just because I'm trying to finish my story before we reach Ashcroft. Your story? Of course. I've been doing a series of articles on the Fargo gang and those two wonderful men I met in Center City. Well, they've been front page news. I'm afraid I don't quite follow you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Mary Tanner. My father's the editor of the newspaper in Ashcroft. When he heard the Fargo gang had been captured and taken to Center City, he sent me over there to cover the story. I stayed on for a couple weeks for the trial. They pleaded guilty. That's quite an assignment for a girl. Oh, I've been a reporter for years. And you got a good story? A wonderful one. Oh, you should have seen the two men who captured the gang. Two men captured a whole gang? That's right. One was an Indian and the other wore a mask. You mean you've never heard of the Lone Ranger? Oh, him, yes, of course. My father used to talk about him a lot. Uh, they knew each other once. I'm Jim Farnham. My mother owns the Maribel mine. Oh, it's a pity you don't own the Queen Bee mine right next to yours. I hear it's been producing a lot more ore than the Maribel recently. You don't say. Who does own it? Oh, some corporation or other. And after I got my degree, I figured it was time I made use of what I'd learned. My dad was a fine engineer. I, I hope I'm half as good. I'm sure you will be. You know, I, I love this country. I, I like the bigness of it and the greenness. I like everything about it, especially the people. Stagecoach. Come on. Tanner. This young man's been shot. Will you please help me with him? I'm afraid he may be dead. The bullet went right toward his heart. He's a long way from being dead, Miss Tanner. Now, this is what saved his life. He's a lucky fellow. Whoever fired on him was certainly a sharpshooter. Huh. Take it easy. You're all right. That, that mask. You shot me. No, Mr. Farnham. This isn't the man who shot you. He's the one I saw in Center City. He's on our side of the law. The man my father used to know? Then you certainly are my friend. But who did shoot me and why? That's something we'd better find out fast before they try it again. Have you any idea where that shot came from? I caught a glimpse of a man riding off from that ridge about a half a mile back. I couldn't see who he was. 
Do you know anyone who would want to kill you? Not a soul. I've never been in this territory before. Who knew you were coming here? The only one we notified was Luther Gage, my mother's representative in Ashcroft. Of course, he may have told many people. There was no secret about it. How much do you know about him? He's one of the most respected and best-liked citizens of our town. She's right, mister. I have no reason to mistrust Gage. He's always done a fine job in handling Dad's affairs out here. Then someone was certainly anxious to get you out of the way. And until we find out who that someone is, your life will be in constant danger. What do we do then? I suggest that you and Miss Tanner go on to Ashcroft. Report this to the sheriff and Mr. Gage. But what about you? Won't you come with us? This is going to be another wonderful front page story for my father's newspaper. We'll meet you there later. Right now, Tano and I will go after the trail of the men who ambushed Jim. It may lead us to the answers to a lot of questions. Miss Tanner? Man, stop here. You're right, Tonto. You could have had a perfect shot at the coach from this spot. Him go this way. Here's where he mounted his horse. Look, Kimisani. Left front foot of horse, plenty lame. Have loose shoe. We're in luck, Tonto. That should slow him down wherever he's going. Uh, the track's going that direction. Yes, yeah, towards the town of Ashcroft. The same place where Farnham and Miss Tanner are headed. Tano, if your horse went lame, where's the first place you'd go when you got back to town? I may go to Blacksmith, have new shoe put on. Exactly. I think we'd better pay a visit to the Blacksmith in Ashcroft. We might find a horse with a lame front foot. Come on. Pascal, what took you so long? My horse went lame. I had to leave him at the blacksmith shop to be shot. Never mind about the horse. What happened with young Farnham? You mean the late young Farnham? Then he's dead? You're sure? Like I said, Mr. Gage, I don't miss. One shot and he was done for. I wish you weren't so cocksure of yourself. It makes me nervous. Well, if you're so worried, take a look out the window. That sounds like the stage coming in now. Any sign of him? Yes. I take it he's the young man sitting next to Mary Tanner. But it can't be. My rifle was aimed right at his heart. He's got to be dead. And I presume that's his ghost who just arrived in town. You fool. So you never miss. Well, you missed this time. And we're up to our necks in trouble. I don't understand. I saw him get hit. There they go into the sheriff's office. That means the law moves in. If they link that ambush to me, we're both finished. I don't see where we're in such bad trouble, Mr. Gage. So I missed on my first try. But that don't mean I can't try again. And this time I won't miss. You not only won't miss, you won't try. Well, what do you mean? The young Mr. Farnham's no fool. He's been shot at once. He'll be on his guard against a second try. And so will the sheriff. But we have to get rid of him. You said so yourself, else he'll find out about the mine. We'll get rid of him, all right. But we can't let it look like murder. Now, if we want to come out of this with a clean bill of health... Well, what other way is it? A very simple way. The young Mr. Farnham will meet with an unfortunate accident. The kind that happens every day to people in his profession. I don't get you. He came here to inspect his mother's mind, didn't he? Very well, we'll let him inspect it to his heart's content. But that tunnel we blew open, he'll see it. Exactly. And it's all lined with blasting powder. Wouldn't it be regrettable if it were to suddenly cave in on him while he were examining it? We couldn't be blamed for that, could we? I sure got to hand it to you, Mr. Gage. It's the perfect way. Hey, he's coming out of the sheriff's office. He's headed over here. Good. Get on your horse and meet me at the mine as soon as you can. But supposing he don't want to inspect the mine right away? I think I can persuade him to. After all, that's what he's here for. Mr. Gage? Yes. I'm Henry Farnham's son. Jim Farnham. Well, well, well. Welcome to Ashcroft. I can't tell you how glad I am to meet you. Mind if we ask you a few questions? Uh, hold on a minute, mister. I promised to have this shoe ready by now. 
If that's you, we've come to ask you about. Ah, uh, there we are. Matt! Don't come any closer. Put down those tongs and you won't get hurt. If you're fixing to rob me, mister, you picked on a mighty poor man. We're not thieves. As I said before, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Then why the mask? Only honest man I ever heard of that wore a mask is a man called the Lone Ranger. He captured a gang over near Center City last week. Now, don't try to tell me you're him. Did you fire a silver bullet like this one? Say, you are him. Mister, ask me any question you want. All I'd like to know is, who owns this horse with the lame foot? That one? Oh, that belongs to Pete Lasco. He just brought it in a little while ago. Who Pete Lasco? He's foreman of the Mary Bell Mine Engine. Works for Luther Gage. Luther Gage? Tano, it looks as if Mr. Gage is not an honest man. You think him send Lasco to ambush Jim Farnham? Ambush? What are you two talking about? Gage is an honest man. So is Lasco. Why, they wouldn't ambush anybody. They already have. Tano, we'd better find Jim. If he's gone to see Gage, he may be facing the worst danger of his life. You're right, Kimisami. We go quick. You're not going anywhere, Injun. Neither are you, mister. Drop those guns quick. Pete, what's the meaning of this? Did you hear what they said about you? Yeah, I heard. I'm only sorry you heard it too, Barney. Well, what do you mean? Because now you know too much for your own good, just like they do. Now get those hands up, all three of you. You can't shoot all three of us in cold blood, Lasco. How would you explain our deaths? Easy. I saw poor old Barney here being held up by a masked man and ninja. I went to his rescue. But I was too late. They shot him, and I shot them. You were right to worry about young Fauna, mister. By now, he's halfway to the Maribel mine with Mr. Gage. Once he gets there, he's never going to leave alive. Now, get those hands back up! Whatever you say, Lasco. Quick thinking, mister. Sure hope I never have that closer call again. Tell him, tie him up and take him to the sheriff's office. I'll head for the Maribel. This is where we used to dig the highest grade ore. If you'll examine the walls, you'll see how inferior it is now. Where does this tunnel lead? Oh, just a new one we blasted through the other day, looking for some fresh veins of gold. No luck, though, the walls were bled dry. Uh, see for yourself. understand this, Mr. Gage. You said the grade of war was getting worse. This seems like fine high-grade ore to me. It is fine high-grade ore. Then why did you write my mother that it was... What's the matter, Mr. Gage? Why the gun? You come to the end of the road, Jim. Then it was you that ambushed me, wasn't it? Not me, personally, but a capable assistant of mine. He ought to be here any minute now. But why? Why? It's very simple. This mine is one of the richest in all Colorado. I've wanted it for years. Now I'm taking it. Don't be ridiculous, Gage. People know that I come to inspect the mine with you. If they should find me dead with a bullet in me, it won't take them long to guess who put it there. They won't find you with a bullet in you. Oh, no? What will they find? Just start walking through that tunnel, and you'll learn. Oh, Gage, no matter what you're planning on doing with me, it still won't get you the mine. My mother won't sell. Won't she? Not even when I write her that the mine was the cause of your death? I think she will. Now get into that tunnel. That you, Lasco? You expecting someone else, Mr. Gage? You're not, Lasco. Now listen, I've got my gun on Farnham. You toss your guns out or I'll let him have it. All right, Gage. I've thrown it out. Don't play games with me, mister. If you're the masked man that Farnham told me about, you carry two guns. Now let's have the other one. That's better. Now come on out here in the open. I'm coming, Gage. Well, what's keeping you? Right here, Gage. Stop! 
Stop, stop, I've had enough. All right, Gage. You came just in time, friend. He was ready to finish me off. Yes, and I'm curious to know how. It could be very important evidence in court. It had something to do with walking through this tunnel. I know. I heard. Suppose you walk in there, Gage. All right. If you insist. So that was the unfortunate accident Gage had planned for you. Jim, if we don't get him out of there in a hurry, he'll be in no condition to stand on trial. Well, Jim, looks like we found all of Gage's papers that the sheriff wanted for evidence. I sure wish he'd deputize someone else for this job. I never dreamed that one man could be working on so many crooked deals at the same time. Looked like enough evidence here to put him and Lasko in prison for life. And all the men who worked for them. Thanks to you two, I have another front page story for Dad's newspaper. What about you, Jim? You going back to San Francisco? No, I think I'll stick around here for a while. I've grown rather fond of the wild and woolly west. It has such pretty scenery. Come on, Tom. We're not needed here anymore. Bye, Miss Tanner. Adios, Jim. Bye. Goodbye. Adios. Oh, my goodness, they're gone. And I didn't even get a chance to interview the masked man. <laughs> interview him? What for? You've been writing about him all week. Won't people get a little bored? About him? No, Jim. I could write about him all year and people wouldn't get bored. Because he's an inspiration to everyone who reads about him. That's how all of us in the West feel about the Lone Ranger. Oh, oh, oh.